Hello everyone, welcome to today's Halloween review. Today we'll be taking a look at A Scream in the Night. This one isn't so much a horror film as it is a mystery crime thriller. Or is it? Let's jump into the synopsis and review and find out. The movie opens with Joe Bentley talking to a jewel merchant and being vague about a transaction. We quickly transition to Jack Wu Ting and Inspector Green discussing finding the location of a criminal Johnny Fly. Joe and his niece Edith arrive at the same location and are served by Johnny Fly, who is disguised as a waiter. Edith invites Jack over to the table and Joe excuses himself, only to be assaulted in his room for a ruby he bought called the Tear of Buddha. The inspector comes to look into the matter after Jack finds Johnny Fly's signature weapon, a length of rope. Edith admits to having the ruby on her person, which is why Johnny Fly didn't get it. The scene swaps to a bar owned by a ruffian named Butch Curtin, and the most annoying scene of darts ever, with a parrot making more noise than the rest of the humans in the room can buy. Upstairs, Johnny and his girl Mora argue over some small diamonds as Wu Ting infiltrates the bar in disguise and tries to milk information out of Butch. A homeless man recognizes Wu Ting as a policeman and informs Johnny. Johnny orders Butch to to kill Wu Ting. The movie jumps to Jack and Inspector Green looking over Wu Ting's corpse, then jumps again to Edith telling Joe she'll be going to the bank. She boards a rickshaw and Johnny somehow kidnaps her from the rickshaw in the middle of a market crowd. We go back to Jack and Inspector Green talking about Wu Ting's death, then Joe calls about Edith going missing for two hours. Edith wakes up in Johnny and Mora's room. Johnny sends Butch to the jeweler to inform him about selling the ruby. Jack intercepts Butch and brings him into the station. There, he questions the bar owner until Butch quickly slips up with his his story. Jack disguises himself as Butch, then goes back to the bar to investigate it and find Johnny and Edith. Mora, who has grown jealous over Johnny's new affection of Edith and is fooled by Jack's disguise, admits that she tried to kill Edith. She brings him to Johnny, who questions where he's been. The jeweler arrives and Johnny talks a bit about selling the ruby, then goes back to Jack and tells him to kill the jeweler as he leaves. He wants to get the money for the ruby and keep the ruby as well. When the time comes for the jeweler to leave, Jack tells the man to play dead and give him the ruby. He then goes back to Johnny's room and is is found out to be a fake by Mora, who somehow now knows Jack is wearing a disguise. Jack finds Edith and reveals himself to her, and the pair fight against Johnny and Mora. The police arrive just after the fight ends, and everyone lives happily ever after. Well, everyone but Wu Ting, Johnny, and Mora. And thus ends the movie. A Scream in the Night is a rather large disappointment. Poor acting, terrible stereotypes, sounds cutting in and out to make room for actors' lines that were edited in after the fact, and the entire thing seems like it was written by a 13-year-old that thought that they were making the next best police thriller. Filled with stereotypes and all the poor acting that came with most 1930s early sound movies, A Scream in the Night is just dull. And that's not a word that should be used for a horror, thriller, or mystery movie. So as you can guess, I can't recommend this one for viewing. I think that will wrap up today's Halloween review. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and as always, stay positive.